And our fourth main topic today gets submitted to us by Marcus. And Marcus writes, Hey, John, love all the work that you do. Thank you so much, Marcus. The president of Sony Pictures had an interview with Variety and had some pretty interesting things to say involving Spider-Man, most notably saying that they do, in fact, have a concrete plan for merging Spidey with their films and even teasing that Spidey may have some involvement in Venom 2. What do you make of this? All right. Thanks a lot for saying that in, Marcus. And yeah, listen, Rob, this has been a debate and discussion you know, speculation, everything for years. Mm. Are we going to see Spider-Man in the Sony Spider-Verse films? Are we ever going to see him pop up in films like Venom or Morbius or Craven and, you know, Madam Web and, you know, all the other ones that they have coming on, whichever it is, the one that's, uh, um, oh, why am I forgetting the, the girl who just divorced Ted Lasso? The girl who just divorced Jason Sudeikis. Uh, Olivia Wilde. Olivia Wilde. Olivia Wilde is directing, you know, one that's coming, which I'm very excited about, by the way. I, she's a terrific director. But the question has been, what's going on with this? And we also know, Rob, that the upcoming, uh, the upcoming project of Spider-Man Far From Home is technically the final film in the deal between Sony and and Marvel for them to co-produce and co-make and produce and then distribute Spider-Man films together. It's the final one. This is the last one they have in their deal. So what's going on? Well, what is interesting here is that the president of Sony Pictures Movie Group did do a little bit of an interview, and he said some interesting things. Actually, he said a lot of interesting things. Let's look at one thing in particular he said. By the way, Skylar Hillman sends in a super chat badge and live chat. Thanks, Skylar. He says the following. But Panich, that's the president, Panich is the president of Sony, uh, Sony Pictures Movie Group, makes a point of separating Spidey from its other superhero titles. We don't really think of our 900 characters as the Spidey-verse, he says. We have a Marvel Universe. The volume of characters we have, you know, wait until you see the next Venom. Oh my God, there's stuff there to unpack by itself. <laughs> we have over 900 characters. Wait till you see... The next Venom. You don't miss Spider-Man. He pauses. It'll be exciting if they do meet, right? Says the president of Sony. <laughs> there is, there actually is a plan, he says. I think now maybe it's getting a little bit more clear for people uh, where we're headed. And I think when No Way Home comes out, even more will be revealed. Again, a couple of things. We have, we have tons of characters waiting to see Venom. But when you see Venom 2, you'll know that we don't need Spider-Man. But it would be pretty exciting if they met, right? And yes, we do have a plan. Everybody's already starting to figure it out. But it's going to become really clear after No Way Home, says yeah. the president of the Sony Pictures movie group. All right. There is a lot here to unpack, Rob. There's, there's, I mean, there's a lot. And, you know, he goes on, he talks about how great Kevin Feige is and how great Kevin Feige has done with the characters and, and that he even kind of, I, I think reading the interview, Rob, he even kind of implies that, Hey, uh, yeah, even when we make our own films, Kevin might be involved a little bit. I, so I, I, I don't know. There just seemed to be a little bit of an implication there was, we'll, well, we won't yep. read too much into that, but he does drop little hints. Could. Spidey show up in Venom 2? I mean, it'd be great if they met, though, right? He says with a ch chuckle. And we do have a plan moving forward. And of course, again, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, Rob, it is significant that he mentioned Far From Home because Far or No Way Home because No Way Home is the last film in their deal. So it presents us with a couple of options. Option number one is that they're about to announce a brand new deal. That Marvel and Sony are re-upping with each other and they're going to extend this deal even more. And for the time being, Sony's Spideyverse movies and the Marvel Cinematic Universe are going to inhabit the same reality and they're all going to inhabit the same world. That is one interpretation. Another interpretation, which a number of industry professionals are kind of going with, is that 
Sony has just basically laid it out. Yeah, we did sign an extension and it ends with No Way Home. And you guys have seen that we've been dropping Michael Keaton in our trailers for Morbius and you've been kind of getting a sense, but we've got a plan for using Spider-Man once that deal is done. Because remember, once that deal is done, Spider-Man goes back to Sony. Sony, who has made some of the greatest comic book movies ever with Spider-Man. The first Spider-Man, the second Spider-Man, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Uh, there was Spider-Man 3. I love the first Amazing Spider-Man, but there was the second Amazing Spider-Man. Um, mm -hmm. But they have made some fabulous movies, all this kind of stuff. Rob, listen, it is impossible to say anything definitive about what we can take from those comments. But I believe it is clear he is at least... Maybe misleadingly, but he is dropping hints that they do have plans for Spider-Man post No Way Home that maybe we could see. Because, Rob, I remember you thought Spider-Man was going to show up in the first Venom. I remember you thought Spider-Man was going to make it, and a lot of people did. But maybe now it's And even... Venom 2. I said on this show that it was, I thought for sure he was going to show up in Venom 2, at least maybe even in a post credit scene. And you may have been right. I mean, now that he's dropping little things, again, doesn't mean anything, could just being misdirect, all that kind of stuff. Rob, there's so much to impact in the little that he said. What things stood out to you the most, and where do you think his kind of implications were leading us to? What are your thoughts? Well, I, look, I, I think it's a natural uh, thing that, that the Sony Spider-Verse and the MCU are connected. Uh, I think that was an, an inevitability because, and I also believe that Marvel and Sony will continue to share Spider-Man with other movies. I mean, I do think that Spider-Man will continue to be in the MCU because it only strengthens both universes. But we've got, you know, people forget, it's not just the new Venom movie that's coming out, it's Morbius as well. And so they have two Spider-Verse movies coming out and three, if you include Into the Spider-Verse, the, the sequel to that. And then, and, and like, then they I've got always, Aaron Taylor Johnson playing Craven the Hunter now. Yes, and Craven the Hunter. So they're putting together a, a, what could be a great Sinister Six. I still believe, and I have no, I have no basis in, uh, to understand this at all. But if in fact there is a multiverse, it would not surprise me to see Tom Holland's animated Peter Parker, like doing in the middle of Spider-Man: No Way Home, that they do an animation segment where there's a multiverse crossover with into the Spider-Verse. So you would see a version of Tom Holland's Spider-Man interact with animated Miles Morales. I don't know. That's just something I would love to see. Because, you know, John, a Spider-Man a Spider -Man can do whatever a spider can. He spins a web and he sighs. He catches thieves just like flies. Look out, here comes Spider-Man. And I think that means Spider-Man can be anywhere, John. Anywhere <laughs> at all. And, I, you know, I think that it would, it would behoove them. Look at uh, Carnage. Well, Venom and Carnage are set in San Francisco. Uh, I don't know where Morbius is, uh, New York maybe, but that's, we really haven't gone to the West Coast in the MCU other than with Captain Marvel. And um, I, I think that there's no reason to, you could bring San Francisco in, into the MCU, and suddenly Venom and Carnage are there. There's no reason to say that, that why would why would we know? Like, nobody knows, the, the Avengers don't know everything that's going around the planet. And uh, I think we're going to see that. That's what I believe. I think they're going to combine these two universes. And Kevin Feige is going to be the fulcrum between both of them. They're going to share Spider-Man himself. And yet they're going to be building up a Spider-Man rogues gallery that we might even see spill over into the MCU. Who knows? The, of course, the big complication with that comes with, okay, so what, do you, what happens to your franchises when you no longer have a deal? Like if they decided, if, if Marvel and Sony decided that we are going to have, that we're all going to have it the same universe. So Sony making their Morbius, Craven, Venom, you know, Madam Web, whatever movies, they're also going to be living in the same universe. So what's going to happen though, if in four years, Sony and Marvel end their deal, do they just pretend like the characters from the other universes don't exist? You know, it's, uh, it, it becomes, it could, yeah, it no, could be problematic. Keep, I think they're going to keep a deal going. Because, look, the, the, the fact that people forget all the time, I even I forget, that Sony still distributes the Spider-Man movies. They're essentially still Sony movies. Yes, and they yet, are. They're part of the MCU. So they've, and this has been a very lucrative, very a good deal. 
There's no reason. I mean, I don't think, sure, if Sony were to make their own standalone Spider-Man movies, I think that would be fine as well. Um, but, you know, if Spider-Man can come back, because if you look, you've got, coming up, we've got four other than Spider-Man, you, well, three, you've got Eternals, uh, Black Widow, and uh, Shang-Chi coming out. Spider-Man isn't in those. You know, and, and then we've got, of course, No Way Home coming out in December. That's a Sony release, part of the MCU. Then they can make four or five more Marvel movies or 10 Marvel movies. We don't necessarily have to see Spider-Man anymore. And they can bring him back into a larger crossover movie if there's another Avengers film or something that requires his presence. But there's no reason I don't think anybody would miss Spider-Man in the MCU because there's so much other things going on. And then they can bring him back when they need him. Yeah, so I, I believe that's really the two possibilities on the table. But the two possibilities on the table are Sony and Marvel, you know, around the time that Far From Home, or no way, I keep wanting to say Far From Home, the around the time that No Way Home is coming out, that Sony and Marvel are going to announce a big expansion and extension to their deal that continues on what they've been doing and adds in the fact that the Sony characters are going to come in and play as well. That becomes a little bit problematic as to who has creative control over what happens and where, but whatever. That's another thing. Uh, uh, but I really do well, think – I would go 60-40, Rob. I would say it's a 40% chance that happens. I, I'm honestly thinking it's a 60% chance, so it's close, but that Sony is straight up about to take Spider-Man back. I think they. I think Sony is looking at the insane success they had with Venom. I think they're looking at the insane success they had with Spider-Verse. And I think they're thinking, my God, if we made $800 million plus with just Venom, what's going to happen if we make Spider-Man in Venom? And then what happens if we oh, have yeah. Spider-Man and Craven and Morbius and Venom all like in a four-way battle to the death? They're all trying to kill each other kind of movie. My God, what kind of box office could we make with that? Uh, let's get Lord and Miller and put them over in charge of Spider-Man because they did such a great job with our Spider-Verse stuff. Let's put them in charge to shepherd our Spider-Man stuff and say, go. And listen, I'm not saying that's what I would do. I'm not saying that if I was in charge of this whole situation that I would say, take Spider-Man away from MCU and put him back over Sony. I'm not necessarily saying that, but I'm saying that there's a lot of indications that that might be the way Sony is thinking because they realize they yeah. don't need Marvel anymore. They don't, they don't need Marvel. And quite frankly, the way you just kind of put it out so accurately, Rob, Marvel doesn't really need them now either. So right. I don't know. I, I think there's still a lot of options on the table. Rob, I am saying there's two options here. Is there a potential third option that maybe we're missing that it's either like I'm saying it's either going to be a big expansion of the deal and they're going to continue on together or they're taking Spider-Man back and bringing him into this Spider-Verse they have over at Sony. Is there a third option that we're not seeing here that you can think of off the top of your head? Well, I think if anything, uh, sort of a hybrid of both of those ideas. I think they're going to do both. You know, I think they, they really can. Um, they can have a deal, but they're also going to expand their own universe because like, like the president said, wouldn't it be it's it's not it's lost on no one that they want to see spider-man and venom and carnage square off so it's it's you know as they say john to him life is a great big bang up whenever there's <laughs> a hang up you'll find the spider-man john and i think that there's you know this this contract can be a hang up but everyone knows if there's a bang up we get to put all these characters <laughs> together you'll find the spider-man i think that's true and uh, I think it would benefit everyone. Plus, it's a unique, you know, what I like, I, I like the way that they've made this work. We've now had three standalone Spider-Man movies. Well, we're getting our third one uh, under this deal. And Spider-Man's been in Civil War and been in the Avengers films, you know, in, in, in um, Infinity War and Endgame. And I think that it's been very, it's worked for both studios. And if something's working, why let that go? Why not expand it? I mean, I think obviously what they're going to do is when they do their inevitable Sinister Six movie or whatever, Kevin Feige will stay on board as a consultant. He'll make sure that things will, are caressed well into the universe. I mean, hell, Andy Serkis, who's a character in the MCU, is directing or did direct Venom 2. Yep, that's so a good point. There's, there's all kinds of cross-pollination there. And I'm sure Andy Serkis is not the kind of guy who wouldn't call up Kevin Feige and say, hey, man, what do you think about this? I want to make this work. How can we do that? 
I mean, it's all it's a win win for everybody, but mostly it's a win win for us fans. I agree. And listen, I, I like to also point point out uh, uh, unpopular truth. A lot of people panic when they think of Spider-Man not being under the control of the MCU. I, and I, I'm going to say this. Not everybody agrees, and that's fine, but I'm going to say it. Sony has made not one, but two Spider-Man movies that are better than any Spider-Man movie Marvel has made. The uh, Spider-Man 2 is still, I think, you know, in the conversation of one of the greatest comic book movies ever made. And I think Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is better than any and i i i say that rob is somebody who you know i really like homecoming i really like far from home and i'm very excited for no way home but they haven't made a, a spider-man movie as good as sony has now at the same time marvel hasn't made any spider-man movies as bad as the amazing spider-man 2 or sam raimi's right. spider-man 3 fair enough fair enough uh but you get both extremes there anyway guys the question, by the way, Jake Gehring sends in a super chat badge in the live chat uh, there. Thank you, Jake. Appreciate that. Anyway, guys, the question is for you. There is a lot to unpack there from the comments from the president of Sony Pictures. What do you guys take from that? Like, I see two possible implications, the extension of the deal or that they are indeed going to be taking Spider-Man back after No Way Home. And Rob, maybe the title is a little bit of a hint to that. There is No Way Home. After this Spider-Man movie, Spider-Man's out of the MCU. I, I don't know, but there are a lot of things that we could take away from that. Then suggesting that maybe wouldn't it be cool if Venom and Spider-Man met in Spider-Man in Venom 2? Hmm? A lot of things to pull away. He also talked a lot in that interview, Rob, about Sinister Six that we didn't even discuss here yet. I mean, he didn't say anything clear, just kind of, you know, kind of a few more little hints and innuendos. Question is, guys, what do you make of all this? Jump on down into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts okay guys 